Well, good afternoon. It's good to see you again. Thank you for being with us for the last story that we have today of Fanny Crosby, the blind poetess and hymn writer. This has been an exciting story, and today comes the best part and yet the saddest part, and we'll look forward to hearing it. So let's pray, look at a Bible verse, and then we'll sing one of Fanny Crosby's songs to begin, hear the story, and then sing another of her songs at the end. Okay, let's pray. Ready? Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us hear these stories of Fanny Crosby. We pray that this one would be a special blessing and that many would come to know Jesus as their Savior as they hear this, and many boys and girls would use their talents for you, and many men and women would give their hearts to use their talents for you like Fanny Crosby did, and to be faithful to the end, and we'll thank you for the strength you give us through the hard times as well as the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know the Bible verse already, don't you? Let's try to say it. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For, by, for we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. One more time. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Well, one of the songs we've been singing of Fanny Crosby is called Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It. Redeemed means that we were bought by Jesus. Do you know that we're slaves? We're slaves to our sin. We can't stop doing bad things unless Jesus redeems us. He buys us out of the slave market of sin and he gives us new life. But the cost of our redemption, the price of making us free from being slaves to doing bad things, you know what it is? It's death, the blood of Jesus. Jesus had to die, and that was the payment for your sin and my sin. And praise the Lord, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask him to save us, and we believe he's come into our hearts, we give our lives to him, then he will redeem us. And how wonderful it is to tell others that also. Let's see if we can sing, Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, because Jesus is called the Lamb of God. They used to sacrifice lambs, and Jesus was a sacrifice on the cross. Okay, now let's see if we can sing it. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. child and forever I am. Very good. Well, let's get back to the last part now of the story of Fanny Crosby, the blind poetess. Let me make myself little here and the picture bigger. All right. Fanny continued to speak to different groups. In one prison, a man realized he was a sinner and he wanted to be saved. So he called out, Oh, good Lord, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. At home that evening, Fanny wrote the words of a song, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Howard Doan wrote the music, and when it was sung in prison, several prisoners were saved. After a while, the song was used in revival meetings and churches throughout the whole world. As Fanny traveled around the country, people told her how, this, how God had used the song 
to lead them to accept Jesus Christ to be their savior. One day, Mr. Doan rushed into Fanny's apartment. Fanny, Fanny, I have exactly 40 minutes to catch a train to a Sunday school convention. Here's a tune that I wrote. See if it says anything to you. I can't think of some words. And he hummed a simple melody once. Fanny clapped her hands. Why, why, yes, that says to me, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe in his gentle arms. She hurried to the other room in her apartment, knelt and prayed, and in half an hour she returned and she dictated three stanzas and a chorus to go with that music. Mr. Doan introduced the song at the Sunday School Convention. It became a favorite immediately. Eventually, it was translated into 200 languages. For the rest of her life, Fanny received letters about that song from all parts of the world. Christians who were dying were comforted by the song that they were safe in the arms of Jesus. A prisoner continued to believe by repeating the words constantly, safe in the arms of Jesus. A sailor on the high seas was saved when he heard the song and he thought, I'm safe in the arms of Jesus. By this time, Fanny had written many songs and in, her songs appeared in dozens of hymn books. But because some publishers wanted different authors' names in their books, Fanny would use different pen names. She used actually over 200 pen names. Pen names are made up names that writers used to use instead of their own. This is not considered dishonest, and so it was all right for Fanny to do that. Fanny learned that even people in England were singing her songs. An American evangelist, Dwight L. Moody, and his song leader, Ira Sankey, were holding meetings in that country. Many were saved as they listened to the song, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. She was thrilled to know that God was using her hymns across the ocean. But Fanny was not getting rich through her writing. Fanny and Van had chosen to live in the poor section of New York City so they could help neighbors who were poor. Much of the money Fanny received from her songs was given away. One day, when it was time to pay the rent, there wasn't enough money, and Fanny wondered how she would be able to pay their apartment rent. She decided to pray and ask God to supply the money. Shortly after she prayed, a man stopped Fanny as he walked down the street, and he pressed a $10 bill into her hand and left. That would be like one or $200 today. The rent could be paid the bill was exactly what she needed. That night, Fanny wrote the song, All the way the Savior leads me. The words told of God's faithfulness in meeting her needs. The next year, the evangelistic team of Moody and Sankey came to America. Fanny met them in New York. They used her songs in every meeting. Fanny was on her way to reaching the greatest goal of her lifetime. There would be thousands, maybe up to a million people, won to Christ because of the message in her hymns. God was using her tremendously. Fanny's hymns could win a person to Christ because they were filled with scripture. And it's faith in the scripture in the Bible that saves us by Jesus blood, but Fanny herself also led many people to the Savior herself. God was using her now as he had planned, and God had other plans for Fanny's life. The clatter of horses' hooves against the street and the rattle of wagons came and went. Fanny listened to shouts and laugh, voices of laughing children echoing between the apartment buildings. She smiled as she thought of parties she had planned for her neighbors over the years. The parents enjoyed the entertainment as much as the children. While some felt it was a waste of time to plan parties for children, 
Fanny delighted in making others happy. She tried to help them forget their poor surroundings, and her love for Jesus made people want to know Jesus too. If only I were home more often, Fanny said to herself, I could help my neighbors when they faced their problems. Fanny was a popular speaker. She traveled long distances alone to tell others of the Lord Jesus Christ. When she was home, she went down into New York City's worst area to work in the mission several days a week. She listened to the men and women. She talked about how the Lord Jesus could help them. She prayed for those who attended the services, and she led many to receive the Lord Jesus as their Savior. After working 25 years in the mission, she said about the men who smelled bad and lived in terrible conditions, not one was ever ugly to me. They were my boys, and I loved them. After long, busy days, Fanny wrote songs late into the night. While others slept, a little bent-over woman composed hymns and poems and prayed. She prayed for all who visited her during the day. She prayed for pastors and churches in the city. And she prayed for the United States and for its president. The blind poetess, who had met many presidents by now, was known around the world as the queen of gospel songwriters. Fanny did not like that title. She declared over and over to her friends, I am doing what I can with what God has given me. To God be the glory. More than anything else, I desire that the hymns I write will please God and bring people to Christ. Fanny's songs were doing that. She had written 8,000 songs and thousands of people had been saved. Writing, traveling, speaking. Fanny, you're doing too much, her friends cautioned. Nothing but death can make me stop my work for Christ, she answered. After her 80th birthday, she became ill with pneumonia and friends thought she would not live, but she did live. And this time she followed the advice of her family. She left New York City and moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut to live with her sister where she could rest. Van, her husband, was also very sick and he was being cared for by friends. He died some months after Fanny got better and recovered from her illness. Fanny was heartbroken, but she determined even in her sorrow to keep busy. More hymns were written. Fanny continued to speak wherever she was invited. She no longer traveled alone, though. She had a traveling companion on all of her journeys. Because she was so lively, she wore out her companions, even though they were a lot younger than her. The women had to take turns traveling with Fanny with time out between the trips just to rest. Wherever Fanny went, she told others about the Lord Jesus. Sometimes she told when she believed and received the Lord Jesus as her Savior and Lord. Other times she spoke about prayer. I pray for little needs and for big needs. Sometimes God does not give me what I request then I know that he has something better for me. Often, Fanny had speaking engagement every day of the week, sometimes several times a day. On Thursdays, however, when she lived in Bridgeport, she had open house for anyone who wanted and needed to come and see her. She never turned away any person who wanted to talk and get help and advice. One man said to her, if only I were rich, all of my problems would be solved. Fanny smiled. No, you would just have new problems, she said. As for me, take the world and give me Jesus. That night she wrote another hymn called, Take the World But Give Me Jesus. Children in Bridgeport especially enjoyed visiting Aunt Fanny. She was invited to go 
she was invited to go with them to a party in the park. There, with the children around her, Fanny used a book of colors to tell them about the Lord Jesus. She started at the back page of the book. This page is colored gold. It reminds us of heaven. God is in heaven and God wants us to be with him there someday. Heaven is a perfect place. There is no sickness and no sadness or sin there, and there never will be. Fanny then turned to the first page. This is a black page. It reminds us of sin because the Bible says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil in John 3, 19. Evil means sin, bad things. God's word often speaks of sin as darkness. The Bible says all have sinned. Children, if there is no sin in heaven and everyone has sinned, how can we go to heaven? Our sin must be taken away. Only God could solve that problem, and he did. God loves us and wants us in heaven with him, so he made a way for us to go to heaven. God said that sin must be punished. So God sent his son, the Lord Jesus, to earth, and the Lord Jesus never sinned. He lived a perfect life, but wicked men hated him and killed him. They put him on the cross and he died there. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. Jesus was punished instead of us when he died on the cross. Here's a page that's the color red. It reminds me of the blood of the Lord Jesus that flowed from his body when he died, but he did not stay dead. Three days after Jesus died, he came alive, and he's living in heaven today. If you believe Jesus is God's son, and you believe that he paid for your sin, all of your sin, when he died on the cross to forgive you of your sin, then he will forgive you. He will make you clean like this white page, and God will look at you as if you had never sinned then someday you will go to heaven. Believe that Jesus paid for your sin and ask him to come into your heart, forgive your sin, change you and make you a good Christian. Then he'll take you to heaven if you tell him that you believe in Jesus and thank him for saving you. One thing the children loved about Fanny was her cheerfulness, and that cheerfulness never left her. When a reporter was interviewing her at 92 years of age, she said to him, when you publish that I am 92, say that I am 92 years young. I feel like a young woman. I am the happiest person alive. If you should know anyone who is happier, bring him to me. I want to shake his hand. She had lived a long life. She said it was because she learned through prayer to control her appetite, to control her temper, and to control her tongue. <clears throat> Excuse me. I never try to think an unkind thought about any person and never say an unkind word to anyone, Fanley explained. There were many honors that Fanny got during those last 20 years of her life. Birthday parties, national celebrations. Once, a band, a whole band of instruments even escorted her to a meeting playing one of the songs that she had written as they walked through the streets. Fanny was alarmed when she learned so many people no longer believe the Bible. People started to say the Bible was full of fairy tales. And she declared firmly, the Bible is God's word, all of it. My love for the Bible is stronger now than when I was young. 
The book is God's treasure house. It is the lantern that lights my pathway to heaven. One evening in February, when Fanny was 94 years old, she said to some friends, I don't feel well tonight, but tomorrow I shall be better, she said happily. At nine o'clock that night, February 11th, 1915, Fanny sent for her secretary and asked her to write a letter to a neighbor family with a child who had just died. She assured them, your precious Ruth is safe in the arms of Jesus. Then she dictated a poem she had written during the day. Fanny Crosby died that night. She had fulfilled her wish to serve Christ even on the last day of earth. She had given everything she had to her Savior. And even today, up in heaven, she is receiving the honor as songs are still being sung in churches all around the world. Let's us sing one of those songs that we sang before. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Jesus' name, amen. 